Oh crap, this doesn't look good. A conventional compression gauge will tell you if your valves, ring, and head gaskets are sealing well or not. If your compression is poor, the conventional compression gauge will not help you determine what is leaking though. You will need to remove the head and inspect everything and even then it may not be clear what's causing the leak. It can be very difficult, for example, to tell whether a set of piston rings is leaking. Now a differential compression tester, which you can buy or even make yourself, will help you better understand the problem. We did an old school valve job by hand on my Model T a few months ago. Now that it's broken in, I wanted to check the compression and identify and quantify any leaks just to see how well the valve job turned out. There's a link to the valve job video in the description below. Check it out, there's some surprising discoveries. Aviation mechanics, when testing compression, use an ingenious tester called the differential compression tester. These are genius because they pressurize the cylinder without turning the engine over and hold steady state so you can quantify any leaks and you can hunt them down. But they are pricey and I'm kind of cheap. So we built our own out of hardware and plumbing fittings. You should always do a compression test on a hot engine that's fully up to temperature. A cold engine may leak and fail a compression test even if there's no real problem. In this video I did some compression tests on a cold engine just so that there would be some leaks to show. But please, don't compression test a cold engine. There's just no point. First I tested the cylinders with a conventional compression gauge. For the Model T, you need an adapter from 14mm thread to half inch NPT. I got very frustrated because I couldn't get any reading of compression. This gauge works fine on a modern engine, but it would not read on the Model T. I eventually figured this out. It was surprising to me. I've added a little section at the end of the video explaining why and how I got the conventional gauge to work. Watch to the end if you're interested. I got decent compression readings of about 45 psi in three cylinders, but one was reading lower. Now remember, I'm testing a cold engine here purposefully to get leaks, just to demonstrate this. On a Model T with stock pistons, conventional wisdom is it'll run at about 25 psi compression or higher and anything over 40 is excellent. We cobbled together a differential compression tester. It isn't that complicated. Just a regulator, an orifice, a valve, a pressure gauge and an adapter to the spark plug hole. The orifice is kind of fussy if you want your tester to be comparable to other similar testers. The orifice needs to be 40 thousandths in diameter and a quarter of an inch long with 60 degree lead in. For use in aviation, the differential compression gauge would need to be calibrated too, but that's not necessary for this kind of use on our old Model T. The orifice creates a pressure drop when there's air flow, but will have identical pressure on each side of it when the flow is stopped. So a cylinder that has no leakage at all would read the same value on both gauges. A cylinder that is leaking a lot would read zero on the pressure gauge while reading the regulated pressure on the regulator gauge and any other leak will read somewhere in between. Before the differential compression test can be done, the cylinder needs to be brought to top dead center. If it's not, the compressed air will turn the engine over and you'll need the engine to not turn over to keep the cylinder at top dead center with the valves closed. This is a good time to talk about safety. All spark plugs should be out, the battery or main disconnect should be disconnected and the ignition should be off. There are many ways of finding top dead center. You could use a dial indicator or a timing gauge. Use any method that you like. I don't have one of those, so I use the more hands-on method. Using the differential compression gauge dialed down to 20 psi, I pressurized the cylinder. Then I cranked the engine over by hand, slowly, to find top dead center. That's where the engine had no tendency to turn over in either direction. It's important to note that this method is perfectly suited to this test, but it is no good for finding top dead center for timing purposes. 
Now with the differential compression tester valve closed, adjust the regulator to 80 psi. Open the valve and take a reading on both gauges when they've stabilized. The convention is to report the pressure gauge reading over the regulator gauge reading. In aviation, anything better than 60 over 80 is a good reading. This cylinder is reading 80 over 80, at least as precisely as I can measure with these gauges, which is excellent. Here's the test on another cylinder. This one is leaking quite badly, giving a reading of 20 over 80. Now this is where this method of compression testing shines. Because it's steady state, you have time to listen and try to find the source of the leak. In this case, you can hear the leak coming out of the crankcase vent, indicating a leak past the rings. Now remember that I'm doing this test on a cold engine so that I can show a leak. I did retest the engine hot and got a reading of at least 70 over 80 on all the cylinders. This was a huge relief and indicates that my valve job is holding up well and I don't have any other compression leaks. I really like the differential compression test method, especially when working alone. I find it more consistent and a lot more useful. I will still need to determine in time what readings are good enough for a Model T. Now as promised, I want to share with you how I discovered the problem with my conventional compression gauge. Remember, it wouldn't read any compression on my Model T. Compression gauges have a Schrader valve in them that is spring-loaded closed. It's the same kind of valve that's in a tire valve stem. The engine compression pops it open to allow the engine compression pressure to stabilize inside the gauge over several revolutions of the engine, otherwise the gauge would jump up and down as the engine turns over. These valves have a minimum opening pressure. I'll bet you can see where this is going. The Model T has very low compression, due to the engine technology and the fuel quality a hundred years ago. The Model T has compression of 4 to 1, whereas modern cars are as high as 9 to 1 or even higher. My Model T simply couldn't generate enough compression pressure to open the Schrader valve in the gauge. I dug around in all my bits and pieces and found that I had three Schrader valves of different colors. As it turns out, the different colors represent different opening pressures for each valve. I picked the one with the weakest spring, which is the lowest opening pressure, and voila! Now my compression gauge works with my Model T. I'm Steven from Flivver Channel and thanks for watching.